Good morning, everybody. It's your boy, the Bishop, at It Is the Pulse of the People. My guest today, we're talking about hashtag relationship goals. I have wonderful guests today, and we're going to be discussing married life. We're going to be talking about single life. We're going to be talking about it from a female and a male perspective. And we're also going to talk about what it takes to stay in a marriage, not only in a marriage, but how to stay in love. It's about pacing yourself. It's not about running too fast. It's about pacing your so, I'm telling you, keep it locked where you got it. You didn't make a mistake. You clicked on the right thing. It's the pause. We'll be back. Keep it locked where you got it. Listen, this Saturday, August the 8th, 10 a.m., it is The Pulse of People, and we're back with another incredible episode. This week, we're talking about relationships. Matter of fact, we should go ahead and title it Hashtag Relationship Goals. We're going to talk about everything there is about marriage, about single life. We're going to talk about it all. So before you hook up, before you get hooked up, you need to make sure you watch The Pulse of the People. I know that you're ready to say I do. I know you're ready to get or have a wedding and not ready for a marriage, and that's two different things. We're going to talk about that too, but you need to make sure that you tune into The Pulse of the People this Saturday with your boy, The Bishop. I got some couples coming, I got some singles coming, and it's going to be amazing. And we also going to talk about a little bit of that Will and Jada entanglement stuff. So make sure that you are with us this Saturday. It's The Pulse of the People. I holler at you. Peace. Good morning, everybody. You know who it is. It's your boy, the Bishop, and we are here live at the Pulse of the People. I know some of y'all wondering, hold up, you're an hour and six minutes late, Bishop. Guess what? Had makeup malfunction. Don't worry about it. You're watching me now. All right, here we go. I'm telling you, today I'm awfully excited because we're talking about relationship goals. And I know for some of you young ones that's watching us, you thinking relationship goals is you wearing the same T-shirt at King's Dominion. No, that's not relationship goals. Okay, that's a you max an outfit. You wearing the same Air Max. That's not relationship goals. Okay, uh, you getting the puppy together. That's not relationship goals. Okay, relationship goals. We're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about it from a couple different perspectives. Uh, but the first perspective we want to talk about it from is from a married perspective. So I want you uh, to join me in welcoming my guest, the Neils. Now me and the Neils go way back, uh, but I want you to take a moment and introduce yourself to the Pulse of the People audience. Uh, and I believe the chivalry is not dead, so we're going to start with the lady at the house. Perhaps. Now they want to start with the lady. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisa Neal, and this is my husband of 18, almost 19 years. Don't know how long it been. Relationship goals. Relationship goals. Relationship goals. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. It's, it's on you. That was it. That's my intro. That's your intro? That's Thank it. You already this is going to be real interesting right now. That's your intro? <laughs> That's right. it. Marcus Neal, good to see you, man. Um, definitely appreciate you, bro. Definitely appreciate being here. Um, been a long time. Yes. Definitely good seeing you. Marcus Neal, we've been married for 19 years. 19 for the record. Oh, 19. 19, 19 years. for the record. For the I think that's the first time in 19 years. For the record, 19 I years. how long. Relationship goes. <laughs> Relationship but it's good goes. to be here, man. Thanks for Listen, having us. Thank y'all for coming. And, and I want to jump right into our conversation. And I'm hoping that all of our married couples... I uh, pulled up with your boo, eating some pancakes, whatever y'all doing. Y'all can send the kids to play video games or something because we get ready to get into it. Uh, listen, let's talk about this thing called relationship 
goals. And, and, and I want either one of you to start. Let's define what is relationship goals. I just said it ain't a t-shirt. It ain't holding hands. It ain't all that stuff. But in your opinion, mm -hmm. define the word relationship goals. Well, I think for me, relationship goals is being on the same page, having the same ambition, having the same dreams, or if, even if your dreams are different, you're helping each other work toward the common goal. So for me, if you don't have the same goals and the same dreams and the same aspirations, or you're not pushing your partner, mm -hmm. then you really don't have goals. So for me, that's what the relationship goal is, to push each other, to make each other better. What would you say? I would say that I think it's it's – the long haul, the future, mm. where, where we're going with this. Um, mm. uh, when you're talking goals, it's not something that, for the most part, we're looking at instantly right now. We understand this is going to take some time. So we got to be in this for the long haul. Mm. So taking time, being in for the long haul, a lot of times, uh, and that'll be a, my follow-up to my next question, a lot of times, uh, you know, a lot of relationships now are really microwavable. They want it for the short term. They want an outward show uh, without doing the behind the scenes. They want public withdrawals without making personal or private deposits. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a lot of times, you know, they get caught up. You know, people get caught up in that. So when we talk about that, uh, a lot of times we see on the Internet, because this generation is being moved by the Internet, yes. whatever the trend is, uh, we see a lot of these big weddings. And, and I, my next question would be, when you talk about, Marriage, because we're talking about marriage, and marriage is the long haul. It's about achieving goals, uh, and those goals uh, are slow rolled out a longer period of time. We'll talk about that. Let's talk about, let's, let's take this further and talk about the difference between what some would think a wedding and a marriage. They think they're the same, but they're two different things. What would you say to your definition or your, uh, your thoughts about the difference between a wedding and a marriage? Well, for me, a wedding is a moment. Right. It only lasts for a moment. Right. It's the only thing that I can think of that takes forever to plan, and it's over before it started. Wow. So the wedding is something that's just symbolic for the people. The marriage is something that you have to work at. You have to work at it. You have to groom it. You have to prune it. Because if not, it goes all over the place. Mm. So a lot of people, I would prefer you, I would prefer to have a small wedding and put our money toward a house or a 401k or some kind of stock. These, some people now, I'll just say the younger generation, they want these big fantabulous weddings and then the marriage doesn't last six months. Wow. Because the focus was on the wedding and not the actual marriage. Mm. Marriage is work. Wedding is fun. And, and let, me, let me side note that for those of you who are looking to plan or planning weddings during this COVID pandemic season, at the end of the day, the, this pandemic should have got you, gave you the, uh, the mindset to trim your list down anyhow. Because weddings nowadays, or weddings period, I know the ones I've gone to, uh, weddings is just a, a, a big word for party. Uh, for people who are going to talk about you that didn't bring you a gift anyway, they're going to talk about you in the car about how the food tastes nasty, the string beans was nasty, and they didn't want nothing your aunt cooked anyhow. So I think you need to lay off the, and guess what? I can do your wedding for fifty nine ninety five dollars 95 in the comfort of your living room on a Zoom call. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, let's be honest. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not about a big, you know, so... Talk to me from, 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 from the male perspective, from a husband's perspective, when it, we talk about the difference between wedding and marriage. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would have to say, man, you know, don't get so caught up in the day and that you're overlooking the destiny. Wow. Um, let, let, me, let me do what I do. Let me go real with Neil on you and just keep it 100. Yes, sir. When, when me and my wife got married, um, it, it was one of them things. It happened. Very few people showed up. Mm -hmm. And our honeymoon was a limousine drive around D.C. Around D.C. Okay? That's, mm -hmm. that's pretty much what it consisted of. Mm -hmm. Well, 19 years later, we're still sitting here. So I think a lot of times, especially in this generation, we get caught up so much in the day. It, mm -hmm. it becomes a big day for us. It's something we can take pictures. We can hang. We can do this. Everybody's seeing what's happening, and we overlook the destiny of where we're really going with this. Right. Because after the day is over and you wake up the next day, then reality sits in that we're together. Mm. We're together yeah. now. 
you know, officially. yeah, this is this is no officially. longer officially. this is no longer for the lack of better words about having fun. This is about now building a future, putting the work in. Put the work and in. I think if more couples now really, really sit down and focus more on where we're going and not be so more concerned about what we're going to do this particular day, then I think a lot of relationships will last. So it, 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 y'all just going right down my list this morning. I really don't even need my, 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 my pad. Now, when we talk about that, let's talk about this. Let's talk about the struggle being real. What happens when the wedding dress comes off, the tuxedo goes in the closet, um, you're in that honeymoon phase for that first year, everything is, oh, baby, I love you, kisses before work, you know, I missed you, notes, uh, text, well, before it was notes, text messages throughout the day, and, you know, you, you, you seeing each other, it's like the butterflies. What, what happens when you hit that, uh, what I would say, that three-year wall? What happens when the struggle of, or what happens when that wedding wears off and now the marriage has to really begin? When, when, when the money gets a little bit tight, when the money gets funny, what happens when the struggle becomes reality? Because you're living in a fantasy world, but now the struggle becomes, speak to that. What happens when the fantasy now becomes fatal? Now I have to deal with, now we got to deal, now we had our first argument. Now we, now you start to rehearse what your mama said two weeks before the wedding. Mama said, you know what, she crazy anyway. I, I should listen to mama. And that come out your mouth in the argument. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the struggle being real now. Now that the, the wedding, the wares of the wedding have worn off, mm -hmm. let's talk about when it becomes real, when the struggle gets real. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that real with Neil. What happens when that happens? What happens when that happens? Well, it becomes the reality of why did we do this in the first place? Now you just went to my next question. Why did I get married? <laughs> Keep going. So let's that, talk. It, it becomes the reality of why did, why did I get with you in the first place? What did I really want with you in the beginning? Mm. And so once that reality kicks in, then when we hit our three-year wall, mm -hmm. our three-year wall came real quick because we had already had kids. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were already... In our third year, we were having kid number five. Yeah, so we, we're yeah. like kids. We're like already in. Yeah, we're in. You know, so... so Real with Neil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, ain't, you, ain't, you, ain't, you ain't talking to nobody that's new to this. We're true to this. Yeah. That's you know, why we, I got him on the show. We, we were we were we were already in. We were in. That's why I got you him know on the when show. we when we hit that that wall, right? And so when we hit that wall, it was a thing of for me, I had to fall back. One, I'm looking at my kids, so I'm like, okay, dude, get your act together. You know, get your act together. You ain't feeling it right now. Y'all ain't vibing. You know, you about to end up on America's Most Wanted. So let me ask you a question. Side note to that. Because this was the foolish mistake, and yes, honey, I'm putting it out there. This is the foolish mistake that I made. I was talking divorce every day. That was coming out of my mouth. Like, yo, I'm, yo, I'm done. I'm ready to divorce you, shorty. Well, the thing is, a lot of times... At the three-year mark. I ain't saying it now, honey. I love you. Clear that up. Clear that up. Clear that up. I, I think a lot of times people think it, they don't verbalize it. I was verbalizing because no, no, I was hurt. No, but the thing is this. When you just keep thinking it and you don't verbalize it, you wake up and, and the person's like, what happened? Why are you this way? But in your mind, I've been this way. I think the thing is, the representative leaves and the reality comes. Wow. Because when you're dating, in all honesty, you're dating the representative. I'm going to be everything you're looking for. I'm going to be what I know you like, what I know you want, what I know you desire. And then the reality of it is, whatever yeah, like. whatever you like is what I like. <laughs> and so... It's my favorite movies. <laughs> right. So, and the thing is, when that three-year mark hits, it's not even about why did I do this or, or, or I'm not getting what I want. It's a thing of what is it that you're looking for at this point? Because it almost seems like where we started is not where we are right now. And we're not. And, and the, the reality, and the reality is, is we're, we're not. not. And it could be life situations. It could be things that have happened. But at the end of the day, I think Marcus said, you know, it's, it's like, why did I do this? And I'm like, well, what did I want from you? What is it that I wanted from you that I desired that made me say yes, but now I'm not getting it? So my question to that would be, how do you, how do you continue to rekindle when you feel that that flame could be possibly going out even at that three year because... Let me let me let me be real. At the time of our three year, ministry was in it. So that kind of complicated things because we had to appear to be all things to all men. 
then we may save some. But we were losing ourselves in trying to save other people. We were encouraging everybody else, but the people who needed to be encouraged was not encouraged. Mm -hmm. So how then does that, how do you keep, I'm, I'm in too deep now, I can't turn around. Um, because I've taken the blunt of what mama said. I've taken the blunt of what my friends might have said because I didn't, I didn't open my mouth and say, yo, she make me sick, yo. I feel like I've taken all of that, but yet I stay. How do I save face and still remain a man or woman of integrity in my marriage? Even with kids, even with different things that may complicate it, how do I stay there and say, you know what? I'm in it for the long haul. This is more than just a day. How do I make that happen? Okay, so for me, and I'm, and I'm talking from, from the, my perspective of what I had to go through. Right. Um, it's it's going to require two things. It's going to require wisdom and work. Simply what, when, when I hit that wall and I say, you know what, she say one more thing to me, we good. And when I hit that wall, I had had my bags packed. They're sitting by the door. Everything is ready to go. And I'm just literally walking around the house like, all I'm waiting for you to do is say that one thing. And when you say that, I don't even have to go and pack. I'm already packed and I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. So I go over wisdom and work. I go over and I talk to my mom. I'm sitting down talking to my mother, which is, and I don't want to knock this generation. I want to keep saying this generation. But I think one of the things that's lacking in this generation is wisdom and willing to accept it. Right. Willing they to, talk to each other. Willing to accept the mm -hmm. wisdom. So I go to my mom, and I'm sitting in the, in the kitchen, and we're sitting down, and my mother says to me, she says, Marcus, what's wrong with you? And I say, man, that Lisa. And she says, okay, let me hear it. And I started telling her everything Lisa was doing wrong. And my mother says to me, simple words like this. She said, go home, unpack your bags, put everything back in your dresser because you wanted her. <laughs> and I looked at her, and I said, you what did you say? It. She said, we couldn't keep her away from you. You couldn't stay away from her. You wanted her. So get up, go back home, and make it work. When I had to make it work, it had nothing to do with Lisa. It had everything to do with me. Right. So I had to go home and start working on Marcus. You can go to the gym every day and work out all you want. It don't benefit me none. All I do is say, you look good. That's about it. And I think that's what happened in relationships. We start saying we need to work, but we want the other person to do the work. Wow. You got to put your work in. And you got to do what you're supposed to do if you want it to work. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Only on the pulse of people can you get this. You can't get it nowhere else. Uh, so my thing is, even with that, so now we are doing the work. We are, we are, we are talking. We are communicating. We are doing all the things that make relationships healthy. My question then would be, even after we break, break through the wall, we've broken through the wall, uh, things are, you know, is when people say, I forgive, but I don't forget. Because sometimes that, because sometimes that comes back up. So now we've been going good for a while. Mm -hmm. And now something else comes to remind or cause us to reflect what transpired so we get to five years, but you go back and reflect on three years. The moment you see a glimpse of what happened that caused the events of the wall to start to go up. We see that. We didn't mend the defenses. I forgive. I forgive. Kissy kiss. Whatever, whatever. But now something else comes up. And the first thing you throw up is, well, blah, 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 blah. And now you start to revisit that. When couples say they forgive but don't forget, let's speak to that. And then we're going to take a, a quick pause for the calls. When they, when they say they forgive but they don't forget because that becomes ammunition for a dispute or, or heated dialogue is what I would say. Well, I, think, I don't think there's a such thing as I forgive but I don't forget. Okay. You're either forgiven and letting it go or you're not forgiven. I think when you say things like I forgive, but I won't forget, it's because you really didn't forgive. And at mm. the end of the day, if you're not going to forgive, then why continue? Why keep telling me, oh, it's okay. Oh, I love you. I forgive you when you really don't. Because then it comes to, as we talked about earlier, fighting fair. Well, you're not going to fight fair because you didn't forgive. At the end of the day, when somebody hurts you to your core and they do something that messes you up mentally, 
you don't forgive. The only thing you're saying to yourself is, I'm waiting to see it again. Because a lot of people believe a zebra don't change their stripes. Wow. So in a marriage, it's not that you don't love them. It's not that you don't care. But you do put a wall up to say, it's only going to be a matter of time before you do this again. So then what I'm going to do is mentally prepare myself to be able to handle the blow that I'm already expecting. So then it puts me in a place of uncertainty. Then it puts me in a place of I really don't trust anymore. So I, that's why I, you can't tell me you forgive me, but you, you won't forget what I did. You're either going to forgive me and we're going to move on or you're not going to forgive me. So that is like an oxymoron to me. You can't tell me, oh, I forgive you, but I ain't going to never forget it. Then you didn't forgive me. Right. Because, and I don't want to go biblical and spiritual, but the, the Bible says he'll drop it into a sea of forgiveness where it will be remembered no more. That means that in God's mind, I'm, you know what, I'm going to wipe your slate clean. But so many marriages, we don't want to wipe the slate clean because you use the word, we need ammunition. Mm. I need something that I can use against you. Because if you don't do anything else, I have nothing else to pull up. So I got to keep this in my hip pocket just in case I need it. I need you to speak to that, but I want to I wanna piggyback. This thing is getting so good to me. Lord have mercy. I want to piggyback to that when you talk about, um, because I'll be honest with you, uh, I got a problem with uh, Mr. Ruben Stutter. He put a song out so long ago, I'm sorry, 2004. Now, listen here. I, 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 I'm a little upset about that song because my man wrote the song and sung the song and said, this is my sorry for 2004 and I ain't going to do it no more this year. Now, that's a lie. Okay? He wrote a song that was a story because, okay, so when you talk about being sorry mm -hmm. or being apologetic about something that may have, because like you said, you working on, I'm working on me. Mm -hmm. So I can only, if, so I use this week in my mask off moment on my Instagram about the scripture where it talks about the beam and the speck. If you too busy, like you said, holding that speck in your back pocket mm -hmm. to use against me when you got flaws and beams yes. in your eyes, mm -hmm. then what good is that? Because now you're passing judgment on me. And if I'm supposed to be your mate, tell death do us, then it's almost like you're betting against me with house money, saying that, yo, wow. he going any day now, and you're looking at your clock, he going to mess up, she going to mess up. She... But the songwriter said, Lord have mercy, I'm the preacher now. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. So if you are in this because love is patient, mm -hmm. love is kind, mm -hmm. if you're supposed to be patient and kind, then why would you not extend a branch of forgiveness when I apologize sincerely for something I've done but wrong? But how much patience do you want me to have? Talk to him because he that since you start that you start that you like jump it on me. I'm just a hoe. <laughs> Talk to him, then we go take a quick break. I, I think you have to get rid of the reason to want to revisit. Hmm. Okay. I think a lot of times people hold reasons so they can go back to that again. So that once you hold that, you're gonna always be looking for something. You know. Mm. You're gonna all once if you can't let it go and you hold on to it. You're going to look for something else to add to it. You know, you, you have to be able to let it go. You have to be able to move on. And I think a lot of times people get to a place where they say, you know what? I'm going to hold this one. I, 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 I forgive you, but I'm going to hold this one. Because I want to have a reason that I can come back to something and say, oh, remember when you did that? Well, I thought we got past that. Oh, no, you got past that, but I never did. Now, is that more prevalent? And either one of you can answer this. Is that more prevalent for women to hold on to or men to hold on to? I, I, I think it can vary. I think, I think more so, I think sometimes, majority of the time is more so the women want to have that. But I think sometimes it can vary where you can have a guy, depending on the situation, where he might say, you know, I forgive you, but I ain't going to never let so that one like go. So it's like the argumentative person in a relationship, the one who needs to get their point across, would be the one to more so hold on to it or whatever. I'm just going to say it's women. Okay. I mean, we hold on until there's no hold on left to be held. And that's just what we do. That, that's just the makeup. It, it, I, don't, I don't know where it comes from. I don't know why we do it, but we do. This generation calls it being petty. 
Yeah. We're going to leave that alone. Patty. Okay. Well, you want to call no, us no, Patty? I, I didn't call you Patty. You want to call me Patty? Call me Only the opposing people when you take offense to what I just said about a generational thing. Welcome she, to my world. She gonna hold on to that the whole show. I, I, yeah, I'll be like, welcome to my Patty. world. I didn't say, do call me. Patty. Welcome to my world. We're gonna change this show to the boss of Neil. Welcome <laughs> to my world. Oh my God, I mean, I'm fading. I'm fading fast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here. On that note, we gonna take a quick break, man. Y'all, look, keep it locked when you got it. We gonna take a quick oh, break, man. Wow. When we come back, we gonna ask, I'm gonna ask the question: Is love enough? And the difference between love and like, and then. We gonna break on some singles, and we gonna have a single discussion. And I'm bringing the Neils and the singles together, and we gonna close this thing out, man. Keep it locked when you got it. Go get the baby some juice. Come on back. It's the pulse of the people, y'all. Be good, man. We we'll back in a minute. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the show. I wanted to squeak in for just this moment to give you a major announcement. As you know, uh, as we're doing our Relationship Gold show, we got one more show left in season one. So if I tell you there's a season one, then there must be a season two. Well, listen, our season one finale is going to be off the hook. You need to make sure that you watch it on the 15th of August. But listen, after that, you need to get ready. We need to become a major fixture in your home, on your computer, device, whatever, because we're coming back for a season two. That's right, they let your boy back for a season two. And I'm telling you, we are planning to do great and major things. New Kingdom Faith uh, TV, we're doing it big for the second season. I'm telling you, the Pulse of the People is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be greater guests and greater topics and more things that you would want to see every time you click us on. So make sure you get ready. It's going to be season two and it's going to be crazy. They're letting your boy come back. Season two is going to be amazing. It's the Pulse of the People. To the balls of people. I hope the baby stopped crying. Y'all got him something to drink. Uh, I hope y'all got a little bit closer. Now, I hope you ain't separated on the couch. Husband, pull up next to your wife, man. It's all good. Uh, you know she being petty. It's all good. I've been shot four times in the commercial. Four times. You Shots don't see back. the bullet holes. Shots when I back. stand up, I might start bleeding. So, <laughs> I'm here with the Neils, uh, and we are having a ball. I wish y'all could get some of the stuff that's off when we went to commercial. It was off the hook. But I'm here with the Neils, and we're talking about relationship goals. Uh, I want to further our conversation uh, and ask the question uh, from a, and some of, some of y'all might know this and some of y'all get to know it right now. Uh, if you check out Cisco's 1999 album uh, that went 10 times platinum, there was a song on the album called Is Love Enough? I wrote that song, uh, but that's a side note. Um, I'm going to ask the question, is love enough when it comes to apologies, when it comes to continue I'm sorry's, when it comes to different disappointments and heartbreaks, is love enough? Like, are you at the place where you want to holler, as Marvin would say, and throw, both throw up your hands and say, I quit? Is love enough? Like, what continues to keep you in 19 years? What continues to say, you know what? Hey, I'm here. I'm in it. I'm in it. Are you too far in it to where you become detoxed to... The things that would that are toxic, or how does the I'm um, continue? I'm sorry, because I'll be honest, with you, I'll be transparent with you. Been my wife for 15 years. I know sometimes she taught her hands. Me say I'm sorry. So how? And, and that's what I think I love about her more and more is that. And I tell people there are only a few people in this world who see me the way God sees me. They don't see me as the bishop. They see me as in my flaws, and they still respect and love me just the same as God does. So how do you continue to, when the apologies are there, is the love enough? Why are you looking at me, babe? Oh, you he wants you to get, you, 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 wanna you, wanna, you wanna go? Oh, okay, <laughs> Let me I'll get go. my bulletproof vest ready because right. you're going to need it. I don't so, want to get hit. I will say that for me, uh -huh. love had to be enough because there were times I did not like him. I didn't like him. I didn't like I didn't like to see him. I didn't like to hear his voice. I didn't like to think because so much stuff can happen where I knew if I honestly did was not in love with him, I would have been left. 
I would have, because it, like you said, the church, that was one of the issues. It was always, I felt like everybody had him but me. Mm. And when you feel like you become unimportant, then let me find what's important. Because clearly, I'm not important at this point. So it was things like that. And then it's the children. He's a great father. But it's like, okay, you're doing that. But, hey, I'm right here. So you feel like I know he has to be a dad, but what about being my man? I, not my husband. I need you to be my boo. I need you to be my man. Come on, Mark. And so and this was early on. Oh. This, was, this was early on. This is not recent. This is early uh -huh. on. So, and, and, and we did hit a bump so. in the road. Well, you talked about the three-year. We didn't think we were going to make it the first year. And it was, I knew if I was not unequivocally, undoubtedly in love, we would not be here after 19 years. Because life can give you so many things. And it's like, if you don't have a love for that person, right. if you, that person is not your friend, we were friends before we were anything else. If that person is not your friend, if you don't really love that person, then it doesn't even have to be anything major. It could be something small, and it's like, yeah, I'm over it. So, I, I have girlfriends that be like, oh, yeah, I'm over this. So you opened up three different segments with that. You talked about friendship. You talked about love versus like. You talk about being in love with someone because that word love is just being thrown around. Like so it's free, free cake. Man, I love you. Yeah, free cake. And That's it's, what that it's is. And it's no meaning behind, exactly. it's no meaning behind mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, piggybacking off of what your wife said, Marcus, help me to understand those areas because she just laid it out. The friendship, the love, the like, the being in love. So when we talk about is love enough, it had to be. It enough. had to be. It had to be, but those things went in stages to get me to the place that I, I can look beyond his, Lord have mercy, the look fault. beyond the faults and see his need. Mm -hmm. And his need goes far beyond, and we'll get to that in, with the next question. It goes far beyond the tangible, the touch, the what, spend. Well, the, let me help you with this. My need of him went far beyond the tangible. Wow. So it's not just what he needed from me. It's what I needed from him. And what he gave me, I found nowhere else. You tune into the pulse of the people with your girl host, Lisa <laughs> Neal. She's taking my <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm <laughs> done. She's killing it. I'm right? done. She's killing it. I'm done. No, 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 no. You're not done. Talk to, talk to me about piggyback off of what your wife said. Because this is good, some good stuff. So, so depending on how you want to look at it, and I'm just going to go real simple. Babe said a lot of good stuff. I'm just going to keep it really simple. Um, uh, love, is it enough? You know, for God so loved the world, he gave. So he gave love, what she felt was enough to do. Um, Tina Turner says, what love got to do with it? What does it got to do with it? Here was the thing that has kept me where I am. I've reached a place in my life after we've been on each other for 20 some years, mm -hmm. married for 19 years, five kids later. Mm -hmm. What I'm more so in love with, I'm attracted to her sacrifice. Wow. Wow. Because when I honestly look at her and all of the stuff we've been through, I really feel like if I would have had anyone else, I'd be divorced now. So what keeps me in love and what keeps me attracted is the fact that she sacrificed so much to get to this place now. And that's what holds me. I think I just want to stop the show. I want to come, honey, I'm on my way home now. Like, <laughs> because to be honest with you, and, and, and everybody knows me, know, like I, I joke about a lot of stuff and, you know, cause my life has been not a crystal stair. So I have to joke in order to keep what little bit of sanity I have left, left. And to be honest with you, what you just said was how I describe it. Somebody asked me, I feel like I'm the luckiest person in the world because I think about, and I say it often, being married to me is a, you should, like, I believe the reason why God gives you new mercies every morning is because he looks down beside you every morning and see the guy who is on the other side of the bed. And to have a woman who looks beyond and I really don't think my wife is with me because I'm a, a some charity case or whatever. I really think she's in love with, I think that if I could speak for her, 
I think she's in love with my potential. What I could possibly be whenever I exercise, and we'll talk about this even when we get into our, uh, our mental health show uh, coming up in season two, shameless plug. Um, when I get past some of my uh, PTSD moments, when I get past those moments that shook me up as a kid, as a teenager, uh, even as a man, um, seeing the things that I saw, big, going through some of the things I went through and cause it to shape my attitude, messing with my altitude, uh, so to speak. So I think that that, that says a lot uh, that when you have, if I'm talking like the young people, if you have a real one, then you need to hold on. So many times these young people are trading in girls like you trade in cars because they're looking for one that can do this and one that can do that. And if I'm going into uh, my last question of this particular segment, we talk about that because I really want to help these young younger couples when it comes to, uh, we talk about love enough, the expression of love. We from the old school. We, we talk about making love. Y'all just talking about doing whatever the heck y'all doing. Yeah. Uh, with 50 say, I'm into having sex, I ain't into making, yeah, that's what y'all into doing. That we, no, we got to go low and slow because we, yeah, we, uh, we hurt ourselves. So, uh, <laughs> so my question is, what happens in a marriage when you've been with a person, you've seen a person, you've seen them, uh, they, you know, children, you know, all of the stuff, but you still want to honor your vows into giving yourself to that individual uh, what happens when those things, when when those things are not uh, happening religiously? Uh, there are things that permit sickness, things of that nature, that permit some of those where you were spending money before. Some of the, when some of the perks or some of the things that happen in a relationship that, and I hate, like you said, I hate saying this younger gener this young generation looks at it as that's it. It's about Netflix and chill, but what happens when electricity get cut off? Because we've been there before. I can speak for us. We've been there before. What happens when those things, when there's no money, when you live in paycheck to paycheck and you still got to make it happen? Or, you know, us as men, especially being men in ministry, we made a foolish investment in ministry to keep ministry going, but our own house has lacked. Mm -hmm. What happens when we sunk our money into something that we thought the Lord said, but maybe the Lord just gave us the idea and it wasn't a not yet to pull the trigger on it. And baby is wondering where that $150 went because she was going to feed the family for two weeks on that $150. What, how then do I give myself to doing my wifely or my husbandly duties as it, as it, as it, as it attains to sex, as it attains to date nights, as it attains to all of that stuff? How do I keep it fresh? How do I keep it innovative when things aren't really on the up and up or, you know? Well, a couple of things. And, and, and one, let me throw this one at you, everything that you were saying about your wife, and then I'm going to touch that because I know we're running out of time. Um, Don't make me cry. No, I'm just saying. I cry I, easily. I, <laughs> I think more so now what we're dealing with, I think we have to be very careful of what we're attracted to and who's attracted to us for what reason. Right. Because what I'm coming to find out is, you know, whether it be your position, whether it be your style, whether it be, you know, your finances, whatever it is, people are attracted to individuals for sometimes all the wrong reasons. Right. And so um, you have to understand time will change your attraction. Let me say it again. Time will change your attraction. He's preaching that. The reason why I say that, because when we got married, I was 24. I was 24. Mm -hmm. I don't look now like I did when I was 24. Mm -hmm. So all the things she was attracted to then, she can't be attracted to now because I don't have that. So time will change your attraction. Right. Tribulation will draw you closer to the attachment. Wow. <laughs> if you're going to be attached to one another, you're going to have to go through tribulation. And that's what's missing in the ingredients of relationship now. People don't want to go through nothing. Mm. So because we don't go through nothing, we go further apart. Mm. You start to drift from each other. So how do you keep it fresh? You do as the Bible say. You do your first works over. I'm a firm believer that what you did to get them, you're going to have to do to keep them. So that means 
that I got to turn back on the R. Kelly because well, that's what we used that, to do. All I'm, all I'm saying all is, all I'm no, saying all is, it happen. I don't care. His music. I keep, I keep the Jodeci, my I, man. I, I keep Jodeci him. close by. You know what I'm saying? What you did in the beginning, you're gonna have to continue to do, even if you have to recreate it, even right. if you have to become creative with it. Right. You're still gonna have to find that form to package it to continue to do it because you got to remember that's what attracted her. Right. That's what attracted him. Mm -hmm. So if we're not doing what we once did that was attractive, then time changes the attraction. Right. You're no longer feeling the way you once did back then. So how do I woo you in to get you back to that place? You know, even though I got a gut now, I still do what Marcus did when he was 24. That's why I'm out here walking five miles a day, honey, because I want to get back to my fighting weight when you first met your boy, okay? That's why I'm out here in these streets walking every day. That's why we're in these streets. It. That's why I'm in these streets That's walking every day. Because I want to get you back to your boy. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm never getting the hair back, honey. Just you know, that's why we're never in getting the hair back. Never getting the hair back. Ain't going to get no more you fades. You that ain't never happening saying. again. That's going to get one of two fades. Okay? That's why I'm never getting the hair back, honey, so just forget that. Just... Boom, okay? But I'm trying to get back. She asked me the other day, you trying to get skinny like Eric Jr.? I said, I ain't never going to get back there, but I get close, okay? You're going to get close. I get close. You're going to get close. I'll be looking at my sons. I'll be like, y'all stole my body. Right. <laughs> Eric, I want my body back. Yeah, but, but that's good because it helps to keep it, you know, because the optimist said how you lost or how you lost one man is how another woman's going to take yours. So it's good to see that reversed in the way of relationship. The way that you got them is the way you need to keep them. And why, and why, and I know Babe was going to say something, but, and, and I want to flip the script. Why are you on the streets, on that pavement, getting that body back? We need the women to do that thing too. Don't be coming in the bedroom looking like Aunt your mama. You know. Aunt your mama with the bonnet on. I'm just saying, give me a little lingerie. Right. You know. You know, or put the leopard bonnet on. That's all I'm asking a, for. The old mother. No, that's, that's all I'm no. asking for. A mother. bonnet Just is a, a bonnet. Something. Mother, it's leopard you coming in a room wrapped up like the Virgin Mary? We got a problem. We got a problem. You, you heard? I'm just saying. You heard it. You said this was the pulse of the people. It's the pulse of the people. Keep my pulse beating. Yes, sir. Right now, I'm fading fast. Yes, sir. <laughs> Listen, we gonna have more with the deals a little bit later. They gonna come back. They gonna come back and I'll conclude the segment. Listen, man, we are having too much fun on the pulse of the people. We'll be back in a minute. I got some singles. We gonna talk single talk. We gonna help you, those of you uh, who are looking to get who uh, get booed up. You want to get booed up, uh, but you don't know how to get booed up, or you wondering why it's taking you so long to get booed up. We gonna talk about that in a minute from a female and a male perspective. Join us in a minute. It's the pulse of the people. We we'll back in a minute. Go get the baby something else to drink. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying the show. I wanted to squeak in for just this moment to give you a major announcement. As you know, uh, as we're doing our Relationship Gold Show, we got one more show left in season one. So if I tell you there's a season one, then there must be a season two. Well, listen, our season one finale is going to be off the hook. You need to make sure that you watch it on the 15th of August. But listen, after that, you need to get ready. We need to become a major fixture in your home, on your computer, device, whatever, because we're coming back for a season two. That's right, they let your boy back for a season two. And I'm telling you, we are planning to do great and major things. New Kingdom Faith uh, TV, we're doing it big for the second season. I'm telling you, the Pulse of the People is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be greater guests and greater topics and more things that you would want to see every time you click us on. So make sure you get ready. It's going to be season two and it's going to be crazy. They let your boy come back. Season two is going to be amazing. It's the Pulse of the People. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that first segment with the Neils. I'm telling you, I've been knowing the Neils for quite a while, and I'm telling you, just to see them and hang with them again, uh, they're going to be back in a few moments when we have uh, our closing segment. But I hope uh, and pray that you got something out of that. I'm telling you, they really uh, helped me to understand uh, my role as a husband and what I can do more uh, to keep the logs on the fire. I was dead serious, honey. I know you watching. I was dead serious. 
laid on R. Kelly. All right. So uh, now, now, now we look at things that from a different perspective. We talk about relationship goals. Uh, and I wanted to bring uh, two uh, people who are near and dear to me uh, onto the show to speak about relationships. They do have something in common because uh, both of them are uh, military. So uh, we took Navy. Uh, he's saying that very loudly. Navy. Uh, so uh, I don't discriminate. she never discriminates. <laughs> so I want to be able to talk about relationships from a single perspective, both male and female perspective. So I want to take the opportunity to welcome uh, Nathan Wiley. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to welcome Miss Ashley Cook. Thank you all for coming on the Pulse of the People. I know I introduced you, but I want y'all to go ahead and introduce yourselves uh, and just uh, just say hello to the people. And then we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna talk about some single stuff. All right. So go ahead, ladies first, always on the pulse of people. Introduce yourself to the world. No problem. Thanks. First off, thanks for having me, Bishop. I really appreciate it. This is one of my favorite topics. So I am so happy to be here, everyone. I'm Ashley Cook. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. I'm Nathan Wiley, uh, Bishop's right hand man. Thank you. So Bones, I, I thought I thought that Ashley was gonna say this is my favorite show. I thought that's what she was gonna say. She sure. said my favorite topic. She, she didn't say my favorite show. I thought she was going to say my favorite show. My favorite new show. Insert that. Insert favorite new show. Recognize. Pulse of the people. So let's talk about singles. Now I want to talk about, uh, because I want to start with you, Ashley, because you have a very, very, very unique story that I just love to hear. Uh, your testimony, your story is very unique. Can you share that uh, with our uh, audience? Uh, the story, uh, the the, the uh, promise that you made your father your father you promised you made your father share it with the people sure thing so um i grew up uh two-parent household my parents um uh, met back in 84 um they dated for about five years and then they got married and was my mom's first everything my dad was my mom's first everything uh, they were married for 19 years until my dad passed away in 2008 mm -hmm. so i would say my view on relationship from the start was something uh, magical, you know, something that every little girl thinks about when they get married. I have this Prince Charming. I see that my dad treats my mother like a queen. Um, so I want to say it was my ninth grade year. Yep, my first year in high school. Um, and my school, shout out to Cicely Tyson School uh, in East Orange, New Jersey. They had a program. Um, for young kids um, to pledge to be abstinent. So um, that was one of the things that my father and I did together. Uh, he placed the ring on my finger when I was 14 years old. And uh, although I lost the ring, <laughs> And it breaks my heart, um, but I've I've been able to maintain uh, myself. And I'm, you know, it's it's it wasn't it turned into something that it wasn't just for him and I. Right. Um, it's something that I wanted to do to honor God, to honor myself, um, and and just be able to share that special moment with you know my, whoever my forever partner will be. So I'm grateful. So that's an amazing story, um, and like I said, I love every time I hear. It because it it just shows the commitment uh, that you made not only to your earthly father but to your heavenly father that you would keep yourself until God gave gave you or gives you the right person uh, to share that moment with a lot of people uh, and he, I'm pretty sure and I'll be honest I'll just the, as I say often I'll just the pink elephant in the room there are a lot of people who probably sitting on the other side of the computer sitting there watching us gonna say that's craziness that's in a, in a world where everyone is netflix and chilling Trust doing more chilling I've, than I've heard netflix it all and, i've heard it all <laughs> um speak to that how do and, and even for somebody who has because i believe that and and i've heard the term and i don't know how true it is but i've heard it born again virgins and all that kind of stuff even though people who have been promiscuous and things of that nature how do you speak to your level of discipline, how do you speak to your, because I'm pretty sure dudes be like, what's up? So, and they try to, as they say, pull up. So how do you deal with that? I think something that's been very important for me uh, has been safe spaces. Okay. So not putting myself in situations where things could potentially go down. Um, that's been something that I've, you know, I've, I've held, held, tight to in college and even in the military. We I mean, make sure that I'm, I'm making sure that I'm safe. So when I'm going on a date, 
I'm driving myself there. Nobody's coming and picking me up so that if I need to get out in a hurry, I can do what I need to do. No, we're not meeting at your house, you know, date three. You ain't coming we're, to we're the We're not crib. doing that. We're not doing that because I need to make sure that, you know, although, you know, I want to think that in the moment I would say, no, you know, this is my promise. This is what I'm going to do. You don't know what you're going to do in those moments. So make sure that you keep yourself safe. Speaking to the singles, make sure that you keep yourself safe and make sure that you think about those things before you go on the date. Not in the moment you're trying to stop yourself because you may not have enough time to stop yourself. Now, before I go to Nate, let, let now, I, I want you to, to, to speak to this, Ashley. Let's not get it twisted. Right? Because somebody was like, nah, What you I'm finna say? No, no, no. But you, no, 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 no. No, I, no I, want you, I want you to be honest. Let them know that there may have been times that you may have been in a heated situation where you, you were thankful that you had that, as the Bible said, a way of escape. That you've had it. It's not, not, now, I don't want y'all to get it twisted and make it that she's sitting here saying that I am right. Mother Teresa right. over here and I'm chilling and, and grilling. And that's why, that's why I say I think about it before. You know, I'm thinking about those things. In, in the event that this happens, what am I going to do? How am I going to get myself out of this? And I think a lot of singles don't think about those things. They think, oh, it's cool. You know, he said we're just going to chill. So when I get there, that's in my mind. We're just going to chill. No, and then being transparent with the person that you are with. Right. Being transparent with them, like, look, this is where I am. I've, unfortunately, you know, it hasn't always gone well for me to where guys are just like, I'm not up on that, so you can keep it moving. And then I have to make an informed decision. Right. That, okay, well, this is, this is just not for me. It, it doesn't mean that I'm a bad person or I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing because they don't want to do what I want to do. I don't have to... Uh, have them adopt my opinion. My opinion is my opinion, and it's my body, so I have to respect my temple. So let me ask you a question, Nate, being a single man. Uh, if, if, if that was the approach, or if that was an approach, how do you think, do you think that men become insensitive when they hear a confident woman who is assured and, 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 and knows herself, um, and I, I'll go further to even say an assured black woman when they hear that they are, they know who, who they are, they know their worth, they know their boundaries, limitations, they know, do you know, does that, that become almost like a, a phobia for men, single men, to maybe not even want to approach her because they may know or once they hear? How do I speak to that? So, <clears throat> excuse me, the, listening to it, the situation to me, it, it does, it would sound a little, uh, I'm good. I don't want to, sorry, uh, a little scared that they went on approach her. But to a person like me who's in the church as well, that, that would, oh, that's a good thing. You know, so some of the guys that's out here in the streets and will first walk up on her and be like, oh, okay, I'm going to get her. I'm going to change that idea. And they'll still try to push and then, get in, and then they'll get in their feelings be like, dang, I messed up. I can't do nothing. So to a guy like me, it, it, it's, it's reaffirming. Because it's even get hard for the men as well when they want to stay true to it. We both go through the same struggle. So you can speak to it from a man that men go through the same struggle uh, as women, whether or not they're saying no or whether a woman, if they do press up and a woman says no. The struggle is still real for men too. Yes, because there's been plenty of times where the female says, oh, we're not going to do nothing. We're just going to chill. You're going to sit and get into the couch. Next thing you know... Somebody's leaning on somebody, and the movie's off. And My they're not Lord. even to the third scene. My so, Lord. Turn the movie off. Jesus. And I think to speak to that as well, like, women have to be responsible as well. You know, you, if, you, if you say this is what you're going to do, then you have to stick with it. You can't, you can't try to entice him, but only just a little bit. You know, just to, okay, let me, let me try Now, to, when you talk about enticing, because in enticing... Could go a couple of different ways. It could go about your conversation. It could go about your outfits. It could go about you know. I ain't you, talking about no conversation. You show a little leg, then yeah. hey, a brother gonna get yeah. curious. And I'm and I'm not saying you know because I know this. There's a whole culture right now where you know women want to uh, showcase their sensuality and their sexuality, and they feel like as a result of that, you know, it's being punished by well, this is what you're putting out there because you're dressed this way. Right. But at the same time, we have to carry some form of responsibility to say, you know, I'm going to 
use use my words to say how I feel or what I want, but not use actions and and use my words in a different way. Right. My body's saying one thing, but you know. My mind's telling me no. <laughs> my grandma would say something right, like this: right. "If you ain't selling nothing, take the sign down." My God. So my my whole thing is is that sometimes. So okay. So even so, I'll be honest with you. What happens, Nate? What is the response to a man that takes modesty as an attraction? Because some men, could, like you just said, you said that, oh, wow, okay, that's refreshing to know. That could be a turn on to say, yo, okay, she's saving it. That I, I'm, I'm cool with that. Like, let's rock. So to be honest, that's where that does find, I do find that attractive. I get drawn in when someone says, oh, yes, I'm in the church. I want to save. I don't want to do this. I want to wait. I'm trying to do better. Like you said, I born again virgin or whatever you want to call it, that does draw me in. But once I get sucked in, it's a whole nother story. What you mean? What's it's, the whole other story? It's a whole nother story. As I stated, they want to sit, relax, chill. Let's go to the room. You know, and then it's like, but what happened to you wanting to save it? And when, like you said, if you don't put yourself in the right predicament, sometimes you'll get caught up and be like, okay. So, so let me ask a question. What? So, I'll be very transparent when it, when asking this question. What happens when the mindset is we're not going to? You got that Janet Jackson. Let's wait a while before it goes too far. What happens when it does go too far? As a woman, and then I ask you as a man. As a woman, do you place the blame on you? Do you say maybe I didn't convey the objective of this situation? Do you make do you beat yourself about it? Like how does that how do you how do you go about I wouldn't say justifying or rationalizing your fault, but how do you go about conveying then not only to even if it gets you gotta call a timeout, how do you convey that to your partner? Like, hold up. Okay, I think we're going too far. Because now let's think about it. Men think different than women. If the, the, if, if it's green light. Men going to punch it to fifth gear and we, we gone. It's no put it in neutral. Stop it. Hold on. Because I know if I kiss her neck a little bit more, that hold on is going to turn into. So how then do you, you convey that to where it's the line is drawn and like, please don't draw the, and I don't want to be spooky or whatever, but the line is drawn. I think the the important thing to do is up, be up front. Have those conversations up front about what your triggers may be. Even speak to ask your partner what their triggers may be so that you don't find yourself, like you say, in the moment already trying to halt something. It's a train. It's, it's not stopping. So you want to make sure that you, you speak to those things that, okay, when – this happens, then this is how I feel. You know, you have to be very transparent about those things and not just expect for your partner to know or to be able to read your mind yeah, or anything. Them. Right, you know. So that's something I would do. To, to your statement, though, um, I've come to realize that I'm more of, I think, a psychosexual. So the sapiosexual. So once you get my mind going, I'm there and I'm... So you are fast forward. I'm fast forwarded. And it's hard to just say, change that topic, or I'm not going to have a conversation with you now. So I'm supposed to just stop talking altogether? Right. What, what am I supposed to talk about? Right. Because when I'm having an intellectual t- conversation and things are interesting to me, that's when she says, oh, yeah, I want to spend more time with you, or I want to, you know, whatever. Right. So let me ask you a question before we take a break. And, and when we come back from our break, we're going to talk about the infamous new word that's going around, entanglement. Uh-oh. So, but I want to I want to ask this question. Is dating as we, or as in, in our day, courting, is dating dead? Has the internet, has all these profiles, as, as what you look like, or all of that stuff, all your little dating sites, dating cards, and all that stuff, a profile you're putting up. Is dating as we used to know it? Because I know you all are both young, but y'all have old souls like I do. So is courting, you know, opening the door and all those things with no motive? Because I'm back in the day, it was opening doors. It wasn't no motive. Let me wind and dine you, take you out. We could even go Dutch and then not be offensive. You, oh, the man's supposed to pay. But, no, baby, I got it this time. All that stuff. So is dating, because now it's more mating. 
it's not dating. It's about mating and then mating. Because now it's, now that I found the right person, let me see if they work out in the bedroom. So now I know that you can, you can buy me dinner, take me to a movie. We make it go away on the weekend. I know you can pay for some stuff. You can swipe that card. But now let me see what you're working with in the bedroom. You're a good kisser. But is dating as we used to know it? Courting. I'm not going to say dating. Mm-hmm. Courting. Is that dead? Speak to it from a, from, a, from a female perspective. I want to believe that it's not. But in my experiences, I feel like it, it is dead. And I, I want to wanna, wanna wanna... jump in because I, I want to, from a standpoint of, mm-hmm. as, a, as a father, I'm pretty sure you as a father as well, you want to set an example for your sons and your daughters because you want to say to yourself, you know, I'm going to end up like somebody. So mm-hmm. seeing the role model that your dad was. Yes. That's a very hard, that's a very tall glass to try to right. fill. So right. without you looking for the gentleman who's like daddy, mm-hmm. you are kind of looking yeah. for the gentleman. It's, a hard, like it's said, a hard lens. Right. It's a so lens. It, that's just that is your is. perception of dating or courting. Yeah. So as a woman who do you believe is dead? Because these dudes is trying to drag and swag. Is it dead? I'll say yes. I'll, I'll say yes. Um, but I do also believe, and I'm, I'm just going to hold out hope to say, that you can teach someone what you want. My father always used to say, you know, you teach people how to treat you and how to be around you. Mm. So if you set the standard to say, this is, this is what the only thing that I will accept, the person that really wants to be for, with you and for you, mm-hmm then they'll rise to the occasion. Wow. If not all others, they'll keep it moving. So let me ask you a question. Should these conversations be had before we go and get Ruth Chris? Or should this conversation be had before we go to the Red Lobster? Should this be our, because, you know, we went back in the day. It was, what, what you and him do? Oh, we just talking. Yeah. Should that be the talking phase before we Netflix and chill? Should this be the, this be the important conversation we have and not? Absolutely. You hang up, I hang up on three hang up. Absolutely. Ask the hard questions up front, and that way when you get to the date, you know, you already know what to what you're expecting. Just enjoying yourself. Exactly, exactly. What do you say to that? So, so as my personal opinion, I still open doors. I still, it, it doesn't matter if, it's, if I'm on a date, if we're just going to run into the store, anything. I still believe that I'm supposed to open the door. I do believe that I'm supposed to provide. So I do prefer to be the one to pay for the first date, especially. Um, with women trying to be more independent, they don't always tend to like it now. And it's the struggle is as I'm supposed to be the man. I'm supposed to be the breadwinner. I'm showing you that I can provide. My father has always taught me to provide for my family first. Right. And what I needed came after that. Right. So when I'm going on dates, courting, whatever you want to call it, I, try to, I want to show you that I can do this. And if I can't, I am up honest and say, hey, you can't go on that date yet because my ends ain't meeting. I got to move some zeros around and we got to wait a minute. It's his famous line. So I, I still believe in old school court in, and I still try to teach some of the younger men at the church, you walk on the outside of the street. She doesn't walk on the outside of the street. There's many reasons. If you go back, if you had her on the outside of the street, she was for sale. So you're not walking mm. on the street. You're not, you don't have a young lady walking on the outside of the street. You know, you protect her. If that car hops that curve, you get hit first, not her. You got to show these examples to some of them. And I show to the young men, you open the door first, you walk around to the other side. All of that. So those things, I believe, are important because, like you said, it not only helps you to be able to be upfront and honest about what you want, but it starts, it, it lays what is, I think, missing a lot, a, a serious foundation yeah. for what is going to be, as we talked about with the Neils, a, I believe, a successful marriage, yeah. not just a, because a lot of people want to build up to the day, but don't want to do the days ahead. And so sometimes, now, I will ask, and I know I said I was going to a break, but I, I do want to ask this question, then we'll go to a break, because you just segue to it. What happens when your biological clock is ticking, and you have these high standards, and the standards are touching the ceiling? Do you compromise your standard in certain areas to be able to say, like, like Neil was saying, about that work that needs to? So I can, I can bend with this, but I can't speak to that. 
Something that I've done, um, and, and not, it's not my idea. I, I watch a video uh, from a guy that's a relationship coach. His name is Tony Gaskins, and he, he mm -hmm. talked about uh, creating your own list, a list of standards and a list of your preferences. So things that are deal breakers for you and things that, you know, you just want. You, things that you you know that you don't necessarily need, right. but you want them. Um, so I think that's that's been something that was very helpful for me to say. Okay, this is this can go. This is not something that you know. I have this, like you said, this lens of how I want this man to be based off of my relationship with my father. Right. But I have to recognize that this man is not going to come all bubby, bubble wrapped, ready made for me. Mm -hmm. Me being the first time, you know, the first person to to uh, date them or experience them, they're going to come with some things, just like I'm going to come with some things. So you have to put things in perspective. I would say create your list. Create your list of, on things that you necessarily are deal deal breakers for you that you want and things that you can say okay you know I, I want him to be six foot come on you know I, a lot of women are dealing with that thing that I want him to be this tall he I ain't gonna him, be Shaquille O'Neal baby <laughs> I want him to be light I want him to you know those are things that you don't know who you're gonna fall in love with right. I might fall in love with a white man I might fall in love with an Asian man Get you right. never know so Robin yeah, Thicke <laughs> <laughs> Things John like that. B. Just taking Good your music. time and, and, and really, really thinking about what's important to you at your core. Speak to that. You have deal breakers. Do you? And I think that that's some good homework uh, for the singles. Just a side note. Thanks for good homework. Make that list. And would you say be honest when you yes, make that list? Absolutely. And be realistic please, when you make that list. Please. Be realistic, especially please. if you live in, let's just say, shooting in the dark, Anne Arundel County. Don't talk about men that live in California because you ain't going to see them here in Anne Arundel County, okay? <laughs> make your list and be honest with your list. And do me a favor, while you're wanting other people to do the work, make sure, as Neil said earlier, make sure you're doing the work too, okay? Speak to that, and then we're going to go to a break. As she said, I, I made a couple of lists in the military, out of the military, because things change. Mm -hmm. When I was in the military, I wanted a certain woman a certain way. Now that I'm out, I want something different. So the list is going to constantly change even when you get older and you mature and you change the way you are. Because while you're working on yourself, you're going to look at things differently all the time. Right. And I agree, that list is very important to also put how do you want to be for that person. Mm. Because as I stated, I feel like I'm the provider. So you got to have that conversation. How are you feel about me being a provider and either you staying at home or you working wherever? What kind of work are you willing, you want to do to make sure that you as the man is still being the man. Wow. Now, what you, what you said yesterday, we were having a conversation yesterday, and you were saying that right now the what you want to attract is someone, because you're bossing up, you want somebody to be bossing up too. Yes. So, I, I, I'm in a pro the process of opening my website, selling my sauces, so I want someone that's going to back me and have the same mentality to go out there and grind. I'm not going to have the time to sit back, chill, watch Netflix, whatever. I'm be church. It's, it's church and work. I love to cook. That's what I do. Church and work. That's that's what my mind consists of. And if I can fit it in, you have to have the understanding that I want to be able to provide for my family. I have children. I have family uh, parents that are getting older that I don't want them to work. I want to be able to provide for my whole family and my spouse. So. So if you listen, if if if, if you, you got to boss up, if it, it, and I believe that that is the sometimes that is a fight. The compatibility is not just an attraction, yeah. but it's what you're doing to make yourself more marketable and how you're uh, the evolution of who you are as a person. Do me a favor, stay locked when you got it. Uh, it's the pulse of people. We're gonna be back when we get back. We're gonna talk about the word that has become trending the world right now. We're gonna talk about entanglement. Don't you go nowhere. It's the Pulse of the People. We'll be back in a second. I hope you're enjoying the show. I wanted to squeak in for just this moment to give you a major announcement. As you know, uh, as we're doing our Relationship Gold Show, we got one more show left in Season 1. So if I tell you there's a Season 1, then there must be a Season 2. Well, listen, our Season 1 finale is going to be off the book. You need to make sure that you watch it on the 15th of August. But listen, after that, you need to get ready. 
we need to become a major fixture in your home, on your computer, device, whatever, because we're coming back for a season two. That's right, they let your boy back for a season two. And I'm telling you, we are planning to do great and major things. New Kingdom Faith uh, TV, we're doing it big for the second season. I'm telling you, the Pulse of the People is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be greater guests and greater topics and more things that you would want to see every time you click us on. So make sure you get ready. It's going to be season two and it's going to be crazy. They're letting your boy come back. Season two is going to be amazing. It's the Pulse of the People. Pulse of the people, listen, I am so glad that you're taking time out of your Saturday to join us, and we are delighted that you are uh, watching us. Make sure that you join us next week. It is the season finale, season one. Pulse of the people, we have a major exclusive. I can't even tell you. That's how big it is. I can't even tell you what's going on, but you need to make sure that you watch it. Next week is going to be mind-blowing. I got a major announcement also for next week going into season two, uh, how we're doing things differently uh, with the Pulse of the People. I am exceedingly grateful uh, to our show's uh, executive producer and creator, Dr. Dante Duckett, and uh, his son. I am going to give him the production name, Duckett and Son Productions. Uh, thankful uh, to them for allowing us uh, this platform. Uh, I've come up with my own little production, your boy, the Bishop uh, Entertainment. Uh, so I'm telling you, we can ready to do some big things. I need you to sit tight. Season two is going to be uh, amazing, but we're closing out season one with a big bang next week. So I want you to get on, tell somebody the Pulse of the People is going to be on next Saturday at 10 a.m. Major exclusive. I'm telling you, major exclusive. I'll just give you this hint. If you live in Anne Arundel County, you might want to watch this exclusive. It's going to be big. Major. So, back to you, uh, you two uh, wonderful people. I want to talk about the word that's sweeping the day right now. Uh, uh, Will and Jada have come out uh, with this, and, and, and if you use this word, I don't even know where the word came from, but uh, entanglement uh, piece, and it is just sweeping the nation, and it was uh, August Alcina and all that stuff, and whatever, whatever, and, and I believe that through that particular time, I think that Will Jada, or Jada and Will, Will Jada and August, whoever, I think they took on a single mentality. I think the mindset, their bodies wanted to be married, but their mindset was thinking single. Uh, and so they use the word entangled. I think the definition there when it comes to that situation is they were entangled between marriage and being a single. A compromising relationship. The Bible says, how long are you going to hark between two opinions? Uh, you can't serve two masters. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Now the bishop is coming in. You can't serve two masters. Uh, and so, uh, and, and you know, the Bible talks about be not entangled in bondage. And I think that a lot had, that starts in the mind. Um, but I, wanna, I, I, want, I want you all to speak from the single perspective about entanglement. I think somebody else said somebody, it was another word there uh, that goes with entanglement or whatever. Uh, and I'll think of it in a minute. But I want to just deal with the entanglement from a sexual entanglement, an infatuation entanglement, and then a relationship entanglement. Because I think all three of them are three different things. These are the things I lay in bed now you think about uh, when I think about this show. A sexual entanglement uh, becomes infatuation. Mm -hmm. And then an infatuation turns into, uh, you know, those kind of things where people become stalkerish. They want to, yeah. you know, if I can't have you, nobody can have you, like a lifetime movie type thing. And then I want you to talk about entanglement from when you get hooked up with somebody and you become entangled, uh, as Neil said, with the idea of a person. Yeah. You can become entangled of an idea of a person. Mm -hmm. And then if that relationship or situation don't work out, that you become almost to where you, you, you come, become stalkerish. Talk about just, just deal in that. Let's have a, a moment of dialogue with that. And then I want you to encourage some singles uh, this morning, and then we're going to move forward. Talk about that entanglement piece. Okay, I'm going to let Nate talk about that. I was going to let you go first. <laughs> Ladies first. Talk about that entanglement um, piece. Well, I honestly, I didn't pay attention to the Will, Jada, whole situation. Um, but when you talk entangled to me, and the compromising of relationships, it's, I look at it as most times the man has his girl and another girl, but she don't know, but he know, whatever. 
Mm. The friend knows, the, the, the side chick knows, that's what it is. We call it the side chick. The side chick knows about the girl, but you know, it's not all out in the open. Um, I feel like it's, it, you should just be open and honest about everything because it's not a good thing to have to and juggle, however, but when it comes down to it, you gotta let everybody have their own decision. Is this something I wanna be in? Is this something I don't wanna deal with? Why can't I just be with one person? It, it's, if she's not enough for you, mm. then let her go until you can find that person that is enough for you and has everything that you're looking for. So Will said at the particular time of the entanglement or whatever that him and Jada weren't saying eye to eye and she, he was free to the place where she could explore other options if she felt the need to. Uh, August recalls the fact that he says that Will kind of quote unquote gave him permission to pursue after Jada. I think it's more so after he got, got caught and then he gave, quote, unquote, permit. It, all of it's hearsay, but the fact, if we're using them as an example, because this all came about because they decided to share their uh, marital bed, and that's what, that's what it is, their marital bed with the world. I think that they, I, never mind, forget what I thought, because I could go there and, yeah, really rip this up. So keep talking about it. As I said, I don't know really what happened, but you said it's hearsay. So if Will allowed Jada to start off with conversation, with Alice, Alice Steve, whatever his name is, and then they start talking, and the next thing they go to the bedroom is that what it originally supposed to start it as because he, she wasn't getting enough conversation from Will. Hmm. Well, things that so make you wonder. So was she just looking for sex or was she looking for conversation because we had the personal conversation earlier of somebody not being home and showed enough attention. So what made it all lead to that? And that's, it's a big mess. So what would you say to somebody who could be in an entanglement but are, is saying it's a lack of attention? Because a lack of attention could be the gateway to what, where an entanglement starts. Because I'm confused in my mind. Because once, once you used to talk to me, I was, I was your every, you were talking to me like a homie. Now we don't talk no more. I didn't write that song, but that's another Drew Hill song. We don't even talk no more. We ran out of words to say. Yeah, what happens when that happens? Because that could be the foundation or the start of where an entanglement, because you don't talk to me, but somebody talks to me, and they twist my mind all up. You don't need him. I, I can love you better than he can. It is what it, like, you don't need that. But you have more invested. You're married. You're a married woman. You're a single guy, or you trying to, Entanglement or entrapment? What is it? Talk to that, because that that's a whole nother show. As Pastor Mark has said, you have to go back to what first got you together. So if you get to a point where you're not talking no more, sit down and have that conversation. Why aren't we talking no more? Why right. aren't we vibing anymore? What do I need to do to get us back to where we once was? So you got to take ownership. Take ownership. You have to know yourself that something's not right with you. Right. You can't always point the finger. They say when you're pointing the finger, there's three pointing back at you. Right. So what are you doing or what aren't you doing? Mm. What are you doing and what aren't you doing? Speak to that, Ashley. We talk about entanglement. Speak to that. I think to piggyback off of Nate, noticing the ebbs and flows of your relationship. Mm. So you have to take time. If it is an actual relationship and not just a situationship, that's what that the word you, was, situation. Yeah, that, that you're taking your time, get it, not just getting to know yourself, but getting to know your partner, what they like, what they don't like. And then if you're going outside of your relationship and you're talking to other people about your business and letting them know that there's problems, then of course they're going to say, if they're interested in you, yeah, come on over here. I'm inviting you over here to be with me. You know, in a marriage, it's, it's a little different. I've never been married before, right. but I still, I don't think... I would go outside and talk to other people. About, and I think that creates a lot of issues for not only married people, but for single people as well. Um, I think we, we talked about this a little bit earlier, Bishop, from um, my time in the military to where there were times when I was out on the road with people and, you know, I did get advances from people that were married people, people that had children. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was always important for me to, to turn them back to their spouse like what would your spouse feel about this conversation that we're having as mm -hmm. an inappropriate conversation and I think a lot of people don't do that they just find that 
okay, well, I like that this person is entertaining me. I don't care that they're married. I don't care that they have kids. I think thinking ahead of yourself that, okay, this person is married. They have other obligations besides this conversation that they're having with me. Mm -hmm. So giving them that, I guess, like I said, turning back to to their spouse to say, Mm -hmm. that's more important than you having this three seconds or, you know, however long the conversation is with me. So the the thing that got me the most about it, because I, I don't know if some of you watched the Red Table Talk when they had that, but, you know, Will was using the, uh, you know, the whole, uh, you know, nickname, you know, all would come to us. So it's obvious that, it's obvious Comfort. that he, he, he was, he befriended the both of them mm-hmm. and then it might have turned to an attraction right. to, because maybe August was attracted to Jada from the standpoint of this is what he wanted mm-hmm. in a woman. And so he was attracted to how accomplished she is, how you know well-spoken she is, blah, 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 blah. And it became something that turned into something in his mind before it happened in, in reality. And sometimes I think entanglements, like I said, start in the mind first, and then they're acted out uh, in different stages. So I want both of you to take a moment before you take a moment and speak to singles Mm -hmm. uh, that are watching us today. How would you, how would you, I want you to pretend like you are Jada. I want you to pretend like you're Will. I'm not going to be August. Okay. (laughs) No, no, ha, ta, 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 ta. The camera's August. I'm not going to be August because I was born in November. Listen. So here it is. I want you to speak to August. The scene is simple. He's pressed up on you. You have told your spouse. You told Will, hey, he coming over here when you ain't home. At first he was coming. We both was here. Now he pressing up and now he, he, I know he got both our numbers in case of, because at the time he had a tragedy. His sister died. He was taking care of his nieces, the whole nine. But now he's pressing a little too close to the vest and I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. You told Will, but Will now is going to make bad boys three. How, because August is coming around. How do you stop August at the door and say, August, you can't, you can't come up in here. No, we can't talk. I know you crying. You, yeah. How do you stop him? Because in his mind, yeah. he well, befriended you, him to get to you. How do you speak to him? You be clear about what the friendship actually is. You know, the, I believe the reason that this became an entanglement because she gave in to, or I gave in to, I leaned into the possibility of a new relationship. Letting this person know that my marriage is first priority. We can be friends because some people don't believe men and women can men, men and women can be platonic friends, but I do as long as you are honest up front about what it is. Mm-hmm. So I think just letting August know or she should have let August know that I'm married. You know, I have kids. I have a family. I'm open to being your friend and supporting you. But that's where the line is drawn. I can only I can only support you as a friend. I can't support you with my body. I'm not going to be able to do that. Mm. So Jada has gotten on the phone. You on the set of Bad Boys 3. You focusing on your job. She's called and said, look, August came by the crib a couple times. He know you gone. We spoke to him and told him that you were going to be gone, but he keep pressing up. How would you then get on the phone and address August? Jada's already told you, look, I didn't told him. We can't do this. How do you address him to reassure him what your spouse has already said? I'm not getting on the phone. I'm getting on the first flight back, first off, because you got to show. Men, we need to see something. You have to see that I'm here. Just because I may be gone, you have to understand that this is still my home. I'm there in this situation. You may think this is what you want, but it was only supposed to be a friendship and not more. So I'm going to come back and let my presence be known. You're not going to put your hands on August, are you? I'm going to pray I don't, but <laughs> I'm saved some days. I'm working on it. So you would, you would show up physically to let August know, look, don't get the wrong idea, partner. This is what it is. Mm-hmm. I would respect if uh, I would appreciate if you stay away from my home and away from my wife and away from my family. Now, August got some things because he's going through a. Yeah. How do you say that? Now you've shown up and now you're at the door together. He didn't show back up because he don't get the hand. How do you say that together but still keep in mind of his mental stage and capacity? 
how do y'all how do you say it and don't run away a potential because guess what that could be on your conscience blood could be on your hand if he go out here and do something harmful to himself because his mind is entangled already and infatuated with you upset and messed up because he thought he had a friend in you already dealing with his PTSD situation and that he went out here and killed himself. I don't believe we should have to put that on ourselves, though, to be completely honest, not okay. being insensitive. As a couple, we are, un we are a united front. It's the two of us as one. So once we've said whatever or said whatever we're going to be in our relationship, once we communicate it to August, I mean, it's not our problem what he goes out and, and does. We can let him know, hey, maybe you should get some real help let a professional help you. But, I mean, I can't be responsible for if you do harm yourself because you want to get at me. And we've already told you, you know, what the expectation was. True. As a, a keeper of my brother and us, as black men and women, we struggle with going to get help. So I would try to help him go get the help that he needs. So you go with him? I would go with him. I'm going to still befriend him. Or at least I'm going to hope, I'm going to try to still befriend That's him. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to still try to befriend him and help him get the help that he needs. That the help you're looking for is not in my wife. Wow. Because as we're talking about singles in a relationship, you think because she's a nice woman that you want to get with her, but that's just a, a, a vice, a, a, an outlet. Because after you finish, the situation's still going to be there. So you need to actually find other coping skills to get done with this, to, to get over the, over the situation. Wow. Do me a favor, uh, because we are running out of time, and I want to get the Neils back on here just to give some encouragement to a married couple. Either one of you want to go first. I want you to look in that camera, and I want you to speak to a uh, single female. I want you to look in that camera and speak to a single male to let them know that, number one, or whatever you want to let them know, but to encourage them that their time is not up, right. that if they're looking for love, uh, that God would give them a place to find love in the right place, uh, and, and, and that they will, they will be happy. And if, if love is delayed, uh, it's not denied. Whatever you want to say, but I want you to speak to uh, a single. Whoever want to go first, sure. I want you to minister sure, to a single. You. If I could say one thing to a single woman, I would say take your time. Um, when you become love, you will attract love. Mm. So just take your time loving on yourself, figuring out the things that are important to you. That's something that I did. What do I like? alone, just me with Ashley, without all the extra noise, without social media, without my phone, without my friends, who am I and what do I like? And once you find those things, I mean, before you know it, the man of your dreams will be there. So don't worry about the time limit. Don't worry about when it's going to happen for you. Just be love and you'll attract love. What would you say to a, uh, a single man? A single man, I'm going to say... Stay focused on what you want to do and provide for you. Do what you want to do for your for your spouse. You have to take, as she said, take the time to see what you like, to understand what she will like. You have to understand who you are and what you bring to the table. You can't go into a situation looking for a woman and you don't even understand what you're bringing to the table yet. So you have to know yourself and take your time. And if the struggle if he comes up against a struggle, you know you can always take a step back and reassure yourself and change your plan and realign your list of actions and people and things that you want to do. Wow. Well, I want to say thank you to both of you for coming on the Fault to People. And you know what? You just gave me an idea. And, of course, you know me. I'm always spontaneous on the spot when it comes. And I speak right to my uh, creator and executive producer. I think we need to do a show in season two called hair, hair Salon and Barbershop Talk. Have some men and women, the kind of stuff we talk about in the barbershop and in the hair salon, we need to go ahead and hook that up. And I know I'm going uh, to bring Marcus and, and, and Nate back, and I'm going to bring uh, Lisa and Ashley back so we can have that conversation, get some more women on one side, get the guy, we're going to have barbershop and hair salon talk. Listen, I want you to keep it locked. We get ready to move into our last segment, and I'm going to let you go for the day. But I want you uh, to make sure that you... Uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. That's right, our YouTube page. I want you to subscribe to our new YouTube page. It is uh, at New Kingdom TV on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe to that. I want 20 of y'all right now to do it. Jump on and uh, find our YouTube page and subscribe to it. You'll get to see all types of content that's happening on New Kingdom TV. So make sure you keep it locked. We'll be back. It's the Pulse of the People.
I hope you're enjoying the show. I wanted to squeak in for just this moment and give you a major announcement. As you know, uh, as we're doing our Relationship Goals show, we got one more show left in season one. So if I tell you there's a season one, then there must be a season two. Well, listen, our season one finale is going to be off the hook. You need to make sure that you watch it on the 15th of August. But listen, after that, you need to get ready. We need to become a major fixture in your home, on your computer, device, whatever, because we're coming back for a season two. That's right, they let your boy back for a season two. And I'm telling you, we are planning to do great and major things. New Kingdom Faith uh, TV, we're doing it big for the second season. I'm telling you, the pulse of the people is going to be phenomenal. It's going to be greater guests and greater topics and more things that you would want to see every time you click us on. So make sure you get ready. It's going to be season two and it's going to be crazy. They're letting your boy come back. Season two is going to be amazing. It's the pulse of the people. to the post listen it's it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today and and i'm just overly excited uh, i'm back with the Neils, and they're gonna uh close us out but i want to take a moment before i give to them i want to do uh my bishop's black owned business spotlight today i want to spotlight first of all what i'm wearing today uh is money catches it is a black owned business you can follow uh money catches at Money catches, uh, underscore four 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 on IG. Uh, make sure also I uh, want to spotlight always clean car detailing. That's my man, uh, Derwin Brooks. You can follow him on Instagram and on Facebook at always clean. Always is with a Z. Clean uh, car detailing. You can follow him. Make sure uh, that when you when you when you check out those uh, businesses, make sure you tell them the Bishop sent you. And of course, you can make sure you get with the greats, Nate the greats. Uh, he was just on the show a second ago. Nate the Greats, all of his barbecue sauces and rubs and all of that stuff. Make sure that you make sure that you uh, be a patron of those black-owned businesses. They're doing it big. You can follow on IG at Nate the Greats uh, on IG, and I believe it's the same on Facebook, if I'm not mistaken. And also, you can get them on www.natethegreats.com. Uh, you can follow that there. You can get all your rubs, and he's working on some stuff for the fall, so you can put your turkey in. Some good stuff uh, come Thanksgiving time. So that's my uh, Bishop's uh, Black Business Spotlight today. Those three businesses. Make sure uh, if you have any questions, you can DM us and let us know uh, if you want more information about those three businesses. But please make sure that you support Black Owned. I'm back with the Neils. I'm back with the Neils, and I want you to take a moment, uh, and I want you to speak to uh, a couple. I know we use uh, in our profession in the church, uh, that you're either in a storm, you're going through a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. I want you to talk to couples. I want you to encourage them. They're in three different places. They're either at the wall, they're about to hit the wall, or they're coming through the wall. Speak to them and encourage somebody to let them know that just because you're at a detour, it does not mean divorce. Because we automatically want to just call it quits. It does not mean divorce. Speak to that. Speak to a couple. Uh, so I'll take this one really quick before Bay finish up. Um, I'm going to say this. Keep it moving so you don't lose it. And I'm going to say that off of a life experience. Really quick. I suffered a horrific hand injury in the parking lot of my dad's church. My dad's church parking lot is gravel. Playing football one day and the ball is thrown. I'm running after it. I look up. The ball get cut, caught in the sun. That's a whole other word there, but we'll keep going. The ball get caught in the sun. I can't see it. Then when I do see it, it's past me. But I feel if I run fast enough, I can catch it. I start to run, pick up speed to get it, lose my footing, and I start sliding on the gravel, and my hand is caught under my knee. Mm. When I get up, I look at my hand, and I see all this activity going on. I say to my son, what is that? He said, Dad, that's a rock. I say, pull it out. He said, I'm not touching it. They go get my wife. She comes in, takes me to the bathroom. She's running water on my hand, and my flesh is falling into the sink. Long story short, they take me to the hospital. They look at my hand after x-ray. They say, Mr. Neal, you got a lot of rocks activity going on your hand. We have to remove them. They remove the rocks. They stitch me up, but they put a splint on it. I go to the hand doctor. When I go to the hand doctor, the hand doctor says, 
who put that splint on your hand? I said, the doctor. He said, that's the worst thing they could have done because they stabilized your hand. Now you've lost movement. Some of y'all have lost movement because the worst thing you could have done, you stopped what you were doing. And because you stopped, everything now is mobilized. The doctor said to me, Mr. Neal, in order for you to keep your ring finger and your pinky finger, you got to get movement back because if not, we're going to have to amputate them. And it took everything in me, even nights I laid in bed, I grabbed my wife's hand with a medical ball and I was moving it, but I'm crying profusely because the pain is taking me out of here. What saved me, and I got to go, what saved me one night I'm in church and they had a keyboard player there because I couldn't play because in order we didn't have a bass player, and in order for me to play keys, I had to run the bass line. Service gets high, I look at the keyboard player, I said, I got that. I go over to the keyboard and I sit down and I start running the bass line. While I'm running the bass line, my hand is bleeding through the galls and I'm crying. My father comes over, he says to everybody, leave him alone and let him play. And I kept running the bass line, moving my fingers because I understood if I stop moving them, I'm going to lose them. And I don't know who this is for, but when you come through it, you're going to heal better than the hurt you're feeling right now. Because if you look at my hands, the scars, you can't even tell what I've been through. And you're going to heal better than how you feel right now. The hurt you're feeling now, you're going to heal better if you can keep moving. Don't stop now and get stuck. Because if you stop moving, you're going to lose what you got. Come on, come on, come on. Speak to married couples. Lord, I feel like dancing what? right there. Woo, my foot. I, I got this it. foot. I, this left foot. I, I Ooh, child. This left foot for the move so bad. Come on. Mm, well, I, I needed that for myself. I, you need that for yourself? I did that for me. I'm taking that, eat that one for me. Go oh, ahead. All right, well. Well, I, I would just want to say to, I, I'm going to speak directly to the married woman. I want you to understand that in this place that you are in, whether you're at the wall, going to the wall, or coming out on the other side of the wall, one thing I want you to do is not lose you. A lot of times what we do is we get so wrapped up in our husbands and so wrapped up in our children and so wrapped up in life that we forget about the simple thing, and it's just two letters, me. It's not selfish, doesn't mean you don't care, doesn't mean you're not concerned, but I've seen so many women get wrapped up in life that they lose themselves. They forget about self-care. They forget about take yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to have your husband to do it or somebody to go with you. Take yourself to the movies. Take yourself to the nail salon. Take yourself to get your pedicure. A lot of times we get lost in other things and the greatest thing that we lose is us. I implore you on today to don't lose you. Because if you lose you, you're no good to anybody in your house. You have to keep yourself together mentally, physically, and emotionally. So I speak to you on today and just say one simple thing. Get back to loving you. Well, well it's just that simple, man. I, I'm telling you, I want to say thank you to all of our guests being here on the Pulse of the People today, I'm telling you, I always walk away from this show, not just as his host, but I walk away a whole person. And so today, I'm walking away even uh, more whole than what I was when I walked in. Big thank you uh, to New Kingdom TV uh, for making this happen. Our executive producer, our producer, uh, thank you so much for doing what you do to make it happen. And especially you, our viewers, thank you for watching us uh, and continue to be uh, the people that we uh, love to serve. Listen, if you have some ideas or you want to see something talked about on the Pulse of the People, drop us a line and let us know. Trust me, we'll keep it in consideration and we'll make sure that we talk about it because at the end of the day, this is the Pulse of the People. Real talk, real issues with real people because it's real necessary. As always, it's your boy, the Bishop. Honey, I'll be home soon. I'll see you next time. Be good. Peace.